God of love, we invite you into this place. Jesus, we light this candle as a sign of your presence. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, enlighten us. We pray that we keep our hearts and minds open to new ideas and that we may grow in our understanding of your ways. Amen. Oh God, you made the Sabbath day your gift, your law, your healing way. You also made within each heart a longing for this day apart. We pray for those who need rest from the insecurities of the world. Help us as we worship and find spaces for guidance, renewal, and hope. We pray all this in your awesome name. Amen. Our reading today is from Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through 28. Jesus was walking through some wheat fields on a Sabbath. As his disciples were walking along with him, they began to pick the heads of wheat. So the Pharisees said to Jesus, look, it is against our law for your disciples to do that on the Sabbath. Jesus answered, have you never read what David did that time when he needed something to eat? He and his men were hungry. So he went into the house of God and ate the bread offered to God. This happened when Abathar was the high priest. According to our law, only the priests may eat this bread, but David ate it and even gave it to his men. And Jesus concluded, the Sabbath was made for the good of the human, for the good of human beings. They were not made for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever seen something uh, that was, should have been pure joy? that was turned into a monot something that was monotonous and grim. Maybe it was when you realized that your child liked to toss the ball around the, the backyard with you. So you decided that they were gonna be a baseball player and you signed them up for T-ball. And after that, they didn't want anything to do with playing ball again. Or you love to bake cakes for friends for their birthdays. So it was going to be a great business for you. But after a while, you began to hate baking. I know that there have been times in my life that I have taken things that are meant to be simple and pleasurable and added so much of my own stuff on it that I completely drained all the enjoyment out of it. Today, we are wrapping up our series, All We Need Is Love. And we're going to talk about the love of God. So it seems kind of strange. What does today's scripture about Sabbath have to do with the love of God? Well, just like other things, our human tendency sometimes kicks in and we go a little overboard and we can be like the Pharisees in this reading. And we can take the concept of setting time aside to rest and to worship as an act of love of God and instead make it a rigorous rule-filled system. So how are we going to honor the Sabbath that instead of being filled with rules is being filled with love? Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, we just come to you on this day, on this Sabbath day, and we open our ears to hear what you have to say to us about taking a time of rest and being with you. Amen. So it's the Sabbath, and Jesus and his disciples are making their way to the synagogue, and the disciples are hungry. So they are going through a wheat field and they pick a few grains and they eat on their way to the synagogue. Now, apparently, the Pharisees are taking the same route to the church because they're there too. And when they get to the synagogue, they ask Jesus why he let his followers break the Sabbath laws by picking those few little things and eating them. By this time in Jesus's public ministry, Sabbath rest had become very stringent and legalized. And there were a several hundred laws about what you could not do on a Sabbath. Now, throughout the Gospels, Jesus has various encounters with the 
Pharisees about the Sabbath. This is constantly a source of tension with them. In Genesis, the story of creation ends with the seventh day. And that is the day when God rested from work and all God had done. And there, in, to emulate what God had done, the Ten Commandments reserves the seventh day for a day for humans to do the same thing. It is not only set apart for rest, but the Sabbath has been made holy. So the Pharisees, they've taken this rich Old Testament concept, but what they did was they made it into a rigid rule, devoid of all of its meaning. There was no reason that taking a few grains of wheat and rubbing it in your hands and then eating it could be considered work. But what Jesus does is when they encounter him, he doesn't challenge the rule him in itself, but instead he tells them a story. Instead of saying, really, is that work? Just going like this and eating some things? It's like taking the shell off of a peanut. But instead, he tells them a story that they would be very familiar with about King David doing the same thing. The story is about David and his men and they're fleeing from uh, the King Saul who was after them. And they're in great physical danger. And they need food to sustain their journey. And David comes to the tabernacle and he asks the priest for bread. And the only bread that is available on that day is the bread that only the priests are allowed to eat. And so despite it is a explicit violation of the law, the priest gives David and his men the bread. So why does he do this? Why does he break the law to give them the bread because the priest is confident that David is acting in accord to God's will and truly needed the bread to accomplish God's work. He saw the rule as what it was important to think about, but something that could be broken to fulfill God's greater purpose. Now, it wasn't that the disciples eating was so urgent but or important, but this encounter comes right before the Pharisees challenging Jesus for healing a man on the Sabbath. And that truly did accomplish God's work and should not be restricted by any rules. Jesus appeals to the Pharisees to consider the true meaning of the Sabbath the Pharisees, uh, they had taken the Sabbath and the purpose for the Sabbath. And what they did was they changed it. They made it, instead of just taking a time to rest from our work into something that was restricted and joyless. Jesus saw the Sabbath in a different way. Jesus saw the Sabbath as a time to share with others a time of healing, a time to extend love and grace. And Jesus's goal was not to annihilate the Sabbath. So let's not, you know, recreate it, but instead to restore it to its true purposes. The Sabbath was about participating in and anticipating God's rest and God's justice for all. And these are the gifts from God to make life full. And it was in this sense that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So they had gotten things kind of twisted around. No, however, even though the Sabbath was made for man, it isn't for us to focus fully on ourselves. It shouldn't depend on us, our desires, or our effort. Instead, the Sabbath is about doing something that connects with God and connects with each other. Jesus invites people into the Sabbath. It could be a time of quietness, a time of being apart, a time of prayer, as well as a time of corporate worship and fellowship. 
Jesus points to the Sabbath as a holy time. Sabbath rest creates a space to honor God. It creates a space to be set apart and to build that loving relationship with God. The uh, Gospels indicate that Jesus worships on the Sabbath, that he uses this time to connect with God, to recharge and to spend time in prayer. However, there is, and I thought this was really interesting, and this is the first time I had ever read this, there is only one Sabbath that Jesus goes and is alone. Mostly, Jesus spends his time in with various parts of the community, that the time of rest is a time of being together in community. So being with others in fellowship, particularly um, in uh, times that, where there can be healing and there can be a community together was important to Jesus. We can see that there are different ways to live out the Sabbath. And, you know, maybe different times need different ways of doing Sabbath. Maybe it isn't always doing the same thing. Maybe that's something important for us to consider. Princeton Seminary graduate Nathan Stuckey wrote a book about the importance of Sabbath, and especially what is the importance of Sabbath for our youth. And in it, he shares about observing the Sabbath and that it's not just a time to take a break, but rather it's a time to reframe what does it mean to be a beloved child of God? You know, Stuckey re recognized for himself that it was a challenge to keep the Sabbath, that every time he tried to do a practice that uh, was around Sabbath, he was at risk of making it another to-do list, to do the same things as the Pharisees, to start putting rules on his days. And he would end up exactly in the same place, that the Sabbath was being controlled by him rather than focusing on God. God instituted the Sabbath so that we could depend on God for our joy as well as our rest. So instead of being so activity-centered, Sabbath is a great opportunity to shift our focus for what we do or what we don't do on what God is doing. <laughs> Sabbath is a time to help us to stop in our tracks and to see the good that God is doing and to celebrate and to worship God for that good. Each of us has the ability to take time apart to be with God. And making time for Sabbath is at least as important as all our other scheduled tasks. You know, when I was reading some accounts of how other people did Sabbath, I thought it was really interesting. You know, they planned ahead. They said, you know, I make my dinner um, on Saturday for Sunday so that I have more time to just sit around and enjoy company and, um, and just have some rest. You know, what could we do to prepare in advance so that we could have a free day to worship and to have prayer as well as enjoy family and friends? What could we do to create some space in our calendar to have some quality time with God and also rest? The ironic thing is the Pharisees with all their patrolling of the Sabbath lost the true purpose of that day. They leaned on their own rules and as, as an expression of their love of God. What are the things that we as a church, maybe it's rituals or practices or traditions that have possibly got in the way of a loving relationship with God? What do we need to do to recapture that spirit of the Sabbath and make space and time to spend time with God. God created six days of work and one day of rest. 
and the Sabbath was created to be life-giving. God gave us Sabbath as a time to pause at work and instead to use that time to delight in and connect with God and each other in the midst of a chaotic world. You know, Sabbath was not just about recharging one's batteries, but instead there's a rhythm. It points to the rhythm of life, that there is a time for work and the time for rest, and that we are called to rest regularly, long before we get to the point that we are burnt out. So Sabbath is the day that the rest of the week cannot survive without. You see, if we get that out of order, if we, we start, we put pack too many things into our day of Sabbath, what we won't be able to do is our work in the way that God desires us to do, and things get disjointed. In this world of anxiety and overwork and stress, the Sabbath is the antidote on the physical and spiritual and emotional basis. So I invite you, let's rest in God. Will you pray with me, please? God of rest, help us to be still enough to know you and love you. Allow us to see how many times for rest and slow down so that we can see that that is your plan for us. May we not just seek this restoration for ourselves, but also be advocates for all of your children to have rest so that we can enjoy Sabbath rest. During this time, we recommit ourselves to you and to living in the way that leads to new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have you. I have, I have, you. have you. You have me. You, you have, have me. me. We have each other. We have, we have each, each other. other. We'll reach out to others. We'll reach, we'll out, reach out, out to, to others. others. And God has us all. God, God has, has us, us all. all.